they've been great to let us come into their world and um, you know I always believe that maybe we're spirits in their world so I don't know I thought it was fantastic Sutton House had certainly shown itself to be deserving of its reputation for strange phenomena. But what would ever sceptical Dr. Kieran O'Keefe make of the night? Sutton House presented a number of problems for the most haunted team. There was a lot of auditory phenomena experienced, but from a sceptic's point of view, we can discount some of it as being noises from outside that are misinterpreted as being noises from inside. If there's anybody... I heard, I heard the most significant auditory phenomena that occurred was the whining and growling of a dog or dogs. Both Kat and I, and I just heard the same thing. What? It was it was like a like a like a hum, like a whine ending in a hum. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, like a dog. dog. Yeah. Now, discounting the possibility that it was the sound of dogs from outside. Were we actually hearing the sounds of creaking floorboards or other unusual sounds in a location? And then because of the suggestion of being told that people had experienced the presence of dogs, we immediately attributed the sounds to that of a dog. On a couple of the vigils at Sutton House, which were accompanied by our guest, Lee Ryan, a scarf appeared to move of its own accord. Now, on a couple of occasions, they had placed the scarf on the back of a chair, and then when returning to the room, it wasn't in the same place. Without the presence of a lock-off camera, we cannot be 100% certain that this was paranormal in nature. What did happen on one of the vigils was the scarf appeared to have been thrown, as if from nowhere, at Yvette and others on the staircase. <laughs> Oh, he got trucked on you. Thank you! Now this is more interesting because at least we have some cameras there and we can hopefully capture the movement of the scarf from its origin to its destination. If we can have that, then perhaps there's evidence of the paranormal. We were getting some unusual tapping sounds. Normally the tapping is of a regular beat or it's in answer to questions or it's two knocks or one knock. <laughs> I knew my tap back sounds were coming in handy when I was a kid. <laughs> On this particular occasion, it appeared to be a rhythmic beat in response to the beat that Lee was tapping out. When tapping occurs in this particular sort of environment, in representing the sceptical community, I have to say we're not in a controlled enough environment for us to assess whether it's actual paranormal evidence or not. Oh. On one particular vigil, there were many, many stones thrown. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> We cannot be 100% certain that we're dealing with paranormal evidence because we're not actually able to capture the origin of the stone throwing and also then the destination. So essentially, footage of the full flight. However, it is quite interesting because it's quite different to any stone throwing incidents that the Most Haunted team has experienced in any other location. Sutton House had given us a night to remember. We had witnessed everything that had been reported of the building and more. From strange noises of dogs, the inevitable tapping that now seems to follow us everywhere. Unexplainable poltergeist activity, including the incident involving Lee Ryan's scarf, which gave all of us pause for thought. But perhaps the oddest were the stone projectiles, which ended our evening. All in all, an investigation we would not easily forget. Until next time. Sleep tight. Want some more? Go straight over to Living 2 right now for the inside track of tonight's investigation. That's Most Haunted Extra on Living 2 right now. Next on Living, though, it's New Zealand's biggest ever comedy. Can a family turn its back on crime forever? Outrageous fortune begins after the break.